So, a fresh new week has arrived, and here on this channel, that means one thing and one thing only. Every week I post an episode of this series we do called Your Take Not Mine, where I turn to you, the viewers, to give me your hottest NBA takes of the week based on what's going on at the time, and I then choose my favorite submissions and discuss them in a video. This week, the trade deadline went down, we saw a ton of blockbuster deals get made, even more moves for role players and impactful guys were made on top of that, and some big names debuts went down, so of course we have plenty to discuss. In order to submit your takes, I make a community post on either the day of or the day before the video, similar to the one that you see on your screen now, so if you want a chance to be featured in a future episode, be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Before we start though, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Prize Picks. As the 2023 NBA season continues on, Prize Picks is the best and easiest way to play daily fantasy to stay engaged on all of the excitement. All you have to do is pick between two and six players and the over or under on their projections, and you can win up to 20 times your original entry. Choose between points, rebounds, assists, three pointers made, fantasy points, and more, plus you can even make mixed sports entries, so if you also happen to be a fan of football, baseball, soccer, or anything else, Prize Picks has you covered. When you play at Prize Picks, you're also not competing against anyone else, it's simply you versus the projections available. For today's slate of games, I'm looking at playing Joel Embiid to score over 33.5 points, Kyrie Irving to score over 25 points, and Luka Doncic to dish out over 7 assists. By going down to the link in the description, of this video and using promo code reference when you sign up, you also get a deposit match bonus of up to $100. Once again, thank you to Prize Picks for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the topic at hand. The first take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Ryan, and he says that the trade, he's referring to the Kevin Durant trade of course, doesn't actually help Phoenix at all because it's coming too late to save them. I've discussed the Sun's window for contention quite a bit on the channel over the last few years, and even in a recent episode of this series, I said that it felt like the Sun's window was quickly shutting. Chris Paul is still one of the best passers in the league, but he's not going to take over and dominate a game like he used to be able to do on a regular basis. Devin Booker is still a great scorer, but not enough to be the best player on a title-winning team, and DeAndre Ayton hasn't really been happy in his role for a while. If they stood pat at the trade deadline, they would have fizzled out hard this year in my opinion, but when you're in such a tight time crunch like the Suns were in, you have to do something drastic to save yourselves, and that's exactly what they did by going out and getting Kevin Durant. For me, their window of opportunity just flung right back open after this trade so I disagree pretty hard with the original take here, but I will say that I do see some causes for concern even if they are minor. For one, the Suns just mortgaged pretty much their entire future by trading away all of their promising young wing players like Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson, along with most of their first round picks, so they are now as all in as it gets. If this group can't get it done, then it will be a very long time until the Suns get back into contention. Additionally, with the age these players are at, health is definitely a concern. Chris Paul has missed about 25 games this year due to injury, Durant has missed about 20 games already this year due to injury, and Durant has missed significant time from injuries for four years in a row, and even Devin Booker has missed a good amount of time this year due to injury. As long as everyone is good to go come playoff time, then I do feel like they're as good as anybody in the Western Conference, with enough star power and experience to go all the way, especially now that they have Kevin Durant. I do, however, understand that it's a big if, and obviously they do need time to get some games under their belt playing together to develop some chemistry to figure out how to win before that can even come. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from User, and he says that he feels as though the energy in the Lakers locker room has shifted and that they're about to see a big turnaround coming to save their season. The Lakers were one of the most active teams in the entire league at the trade deadline, and they basically addressed every major item on their checklist of things that needed to be addressed. The Russell Westbrook partnership was clearly fizzling out, and moving him has been something rumored for a while now, so when they did ship him out, 
it felt like a long time coming, and the fact that they also got a few valuable rotational players, along with D'Angelo Russell in exchange for him, and some draft picks, was pretty impressive, I must say. Now, I'm not going to pretend that D'Angelo Russell is the team's savior by any means, and if I'm being honest, I'm not even sold on him being much better than Russell Westbrook as a player right now, if at all, but I will say that he's probably a better fit for how the Lakers are constructed, and when you throw in Jared Vanderbilt and Malik Beasley into the mix with them, I definitely think the team improved overall. Vanderbilt provides some much-needed defensive help in the front court and can play seamlessly alongside both LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and Malik Beasley is the kind of scorer who is ready to spot up and knock down shots at all times and can heat up in a heartbeat. They also got Mo Bamba, who should be able to serve as the team's backup center, but despite the fact that he was once viewed as a more promising young big man in the league, he's now five years into his career, and realistically, he's a decent shot blocker who can only impact games sporadically. The Lakers are still in 13th place in the West, so I would hold off on expecting the kind of turnaround that results in a deep playoff run, but at the very least, there's no excuses for this squad not to at least make the play-in tournament, and maybe Maybe make their way out of it from there. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes to us from a different Ryan, and he says that the Brooklyn Nets actually won the trade deadline this year despite trading away both of their two best players. Now, the majority of the conversation regarding the Nets has been about how they went from a super team that was supposed to cruise to a championship to having none of those star players left on the roster all within one year, and obviously, that's a tough pill to swallow. James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving were all on the Nets, and it never amounted to anything, and now that era is over. That, no matter how you try to spin it, is a failure. Now, with that being said, when the trade requests got filed and it became inevitable that the Super Team era was coming to an end, the Nets did actually do about as well as they possibly could have with the deals they made given the circumstances. Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson are two unbelievable two-way wings players that are still young enough to be key members of their core for the future, the team got a boatload of first round picks in the deals to help replenish their lack of future picks previously, Dorian Finney-Smith is a terrific player in his defensive role, and they're now a fun, scrappy team. Do they have a real chance to compete for championships anymore? No, probably not, and that's the biggest reason why I can't get on board with the Nets being called the quote-unquote winners of this year's trade deadline, because even though they got good value for their disgruntled stars, their ability to contend also came to an end. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the takes we discussed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.